guys, welcome to another episode of Iconic TV. Today we're looking at the Club 3D 6870. Um, it just came out about a month ago and we're just having a quick overview and a quick review on the performance of it. Let's have a look. Uh, we just, I just did a quick unboxing here. What you get is a VGA to a DVR adapter, crossfire bridge, quick installation guide and a driver CD. The thing I always dislike about Club 3D, you get good value for money, but I feel that um, the packaging and all that doesn't they don't put much effort into they slot the cards in. As you can see here with their with their reference design, it's AMD's reference design that you're looking at here. And um, it just has the standard Club 3D sticker and they put no effort in their own design over here. So but let's have a look at the card. Um, it's got a really cool red lines over here which I dig a lot. Um, it looks really cool, but like I said, the whole Club 3D look is not as good. Um, if we look at the back, it's got two DVR connectors. It's got the new HDMI 1.4. That's the revision between the 5000 series and the 6000 series is the new HDMI ports that are on these cards, which is nice for 3D gaming and, and all that kind of thing. We also have a look at the new DisplayPort adapter they have. This is DisplayPort version 1.2, um, which is also nice. Actually, you can even add additional two more monitors that you could before. So yes, they could do three. You can have to do maybe up to six with off one card, which is really nice with the new... 6000 series, you know. So, let's if we had to consider, if you want to know what the size of this card is, it's about nine inches. Um, its performance range is between the 5870 and the 5850. What you must take into account that this is not an update over the 5870 like you would assume, just because it says 6870 does not mean it's faster than the 50 by 5870, not by a long shot. Um, it's designed as the mid-range card, it's designed to compete directly with the GTX 460, which it does do effectively, it's a bit faster than the GTX 460, but um, it's a bit longer and actually runs a bit hotter than the GTX 460. Um, it, you also, um, so let's have a look how it compares to the size of the GTX 460. It's quite a bit bigger, like I said, it's 9 inches as opposed to nearly 6.5 inches of the GTX 460. So if you want to put it into like a home theater machine that you're going to game on the, on the occasion, then I'd rather go for the GTX 460. I can't comment on the overclocking of, of the 6870 because I haven't done that yet, but um, I would hope that it can be just as good as the GTX 460 has been able to do with its, with its uh, architecture. Uh, what we will do is I'm going to um, do some benchmarks, I'll pull up some graphs for you guys to compare this card with the GTX 480 and, and 5770 and see where it lines up and um, then we'll be back with a conclusion on the card. Alright guys, um, we've just started, finished off the review here. Um, if we can have a look, we've got 67.6 FPS for having benchmark, which is actually fantastic. I was actually expecting it to get a bit less than that. That means, if you remember from our last video, uh, with the GTX 460s, they got 65 odd FPS. So it's actually a faster combination than the GTX 460, which was overclocked, and these are stock standards. So I'm actually really impressed by that. Another thing you need to take into account that ATI, or, or should I say AMD, has never ever been good at tessellation, and this benchmark is full of tessellation. And what tessellation is, is, the, is the, the core thing about DirectX 11 over DirectX um, 10. So, if you want to play DirectX 11 games from now on out, then the 6870 definitely is the card to get. I'm actually really impressed with it. Um, and it has the whole display port 1.2 and HDMI 1.4 outputs. So if you want to play HD gaming, you want to do some 3D gaming in the future, and you want really good tessellation with all the new um, DirectX 11 games coming out, then really it is good value for money. It retails for 2300 and um, I, would, I would seriously consider buying this card over the GTX 460, but like I said, if you want to put it into a smaller machine and you don't have enough space, like a mini RTX board for a home theater machine, then maybe the 9-inch size of this card might not be the better option, you know? I'd rather go for the GTX 460, which is a bit smaller. Uh, but I would, re I would recommend this card. I actually am impressed. Like I said, I expected a bit less. And um, it's definitely a good buy. If you want to check out some more information on this product, you can be sure to visit us at iconic.t.co.za.